Mr. Lowe was a railroad lawyer. Okay. Uh, in fact, he came here, I think, with the railroad. Oh. And uh, maybe Mr. Dickinson did too at the time. But anyway, uh, I remember one night when Miss Virginia won her contest. Mm -hmm. This has to do with you all. You yeah. know, you know, Ruth Ellen. Yeah, Ruth Ellen Mears. And uh, Ruth Ellen boarded a train car, a, 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 a car there. It was the tail end, had a, what you talked about, all the rear end of it, you could walk out. Oh yeah, right, right, right. But if I remember this, make this just, I, I can't get it out of my mind that that the, the, the curtains were green velvet, mm -hmm. and uh, it was really dull. Like it belonged to the president of the Pennsylvania Railroad or whatever oh, railroad it was, uh -huh. and he was going to take her to Atlantic City. Yeah. And, uh, and Mr. Lowe said, I want to know if I want to go over there without that. And I said, sure I do. And we went over there, and she was there, and the president of the railroad was there, and, uh, and it was the tail end of the train, mm -hmm. and it, it had backed itself out to the, on the jetty. Okay. And uh, they were gonna leave the next morning and go to Philadelphia or wherever, and then over to Atlantic, Atlantic City. City. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's funny, we remember, Jan and I remember that, because, uh, you know. Had, they had their own stove, their own cooking in there or something. Uh -huh. I don't remember the car so much, but I remember when she went to Atlantic City because her, her dad and mom, Agnes, my mom's sister, and, and her husband, Lynn Mears, uh, who were Ruth Allen's parents, took us with them to see her off. And I can remember when she went, got ready to step on the step to get in there, the train bumped or something, and it, it, it you know, wasn't enough to throw anybody off or anything, but it kind of scared everybody, you know, just that one little thing, and for some reason that just, Sticks in my mind, you know. I wonder if that was that same car that uh, had to have been. Uh huh. So that's had how Ruth Ellen got to Atlantic City. It was on the train. Mm -hmm. Yes. How did you, know that? you don't remember it, going to the. You know what I can remember? I can remember going over to the train station. Of course, Daddy's store was right across the street. Yeah. And going over and seeing Regis Setch's father was an old man, and he'd have an oil can and had a nozzle on it. Uh -huh. It so long. Uh -huh. He was oiling up all the joints on the Yeah, yeah. Huh. And a fireman. I, I know they had firemen back in those days that shovel coal. Oh, yeah. It's still, I think they still have the unions uh, have it set up, so they still have. I think they have, it, they have that position. They had to keep that position, you know, yeah, for some of the negotiations or some, something. I don't remember what it was. Um, so at that time, you were what, you enjoy or, or uh, the, the, down near the bank, that, that when you said you saw him right across the street from you, um, was that when you all had, your, had the business there? You, you, you talk, yes, you, 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 what, what was the first part of this? I was just saying, you said he, he, walked, he was right across, you know, you could see him over there putting a wall on there on the engine bearings or whatever. Oh yeah. And I was wondering if that's where you, where you were actually. That's doing. where I was. He, yeah. he was right in the parking lot for the ferry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Or the waiter, people who were waiting to walk on the ferry at yeah, the time. Yeah. You know, the ferry was, I, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it, but I, I wish I had, but that was a big, 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 big oh, deal. Oh. Yeah, Juniors and I, we loved, loved going down there watching the ferry, riding on the Elisha Lee, my all time favorite steamboat. We got a model uh, over there. Marshall Hunt. Yeah, Marshall worked on there, yeah. He worked on there, yeah. and, yeah. and uh, that was another gentleman. Yeah, Stairmaster. Yeah. yeah, nice man. He was. He I can't I can remember going on an on a, on a overnight trip out in the woods and going to the village's store and getting a pound of hot dogs. <laughs> we go to Uncle Henry's and got some beer. There <laughs> you talk. Was this in the Boy Scouts? When Henry you Warren. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's related to you. Oh no, 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 no. Just call, we just called him Uncle Henry. <laughs>
Yeah, he, you, you can go in there and get a bottle of wine or whatever. If you, if you reach the counter with your money, you can get whatever you need in there. <laughs> I remember the, uh, the Elisha Lee had a, a big glass window that looked down onto the engine room that you could see, and you could see the, the engine moving when they were reversing and going forward. And you know, it's hard to believe. That was a I, 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 I went across there with Kevin, my son Kevin, mm -hmm. and uh, they had an eclipse when we were halfway across. Oh, wow. Wow. That's sort of interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, were, were you ever in the Boy Scouts? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, Marshall Hunt, was he here? Marshall Hunt was scout the master. man. Yeah. yeah, well, he was Scout Master. Was Mr. Drennan. Did you ever know Mr. Drennan? I had heard the name, but no. He, he had a house stand on the beach. And he, uh, anyway, he, he was a big scout man. He wound up losing his, one of his legs at the end of his life. Hmm. Was he, uh, did Carol he have a daughter, Drennan. Carol Drennan, or was that somebody else? I, I, I don't know, Merle, what must have. Or his, was his wife named Merrill Merrill Drennan? She worked for the doctor, she was a doctor's nurse at the, over here at the, uh, the dentist the clinic. Um, Dr. Belote also. Yeah. Bell. You know what I'm thinking, uh, Patty McCluskey, P Patty Spencer. Yeah. yeah. She told me one time that uh, Dr. Stevenson's wife Trying to commit suicide by by inhaling uh, insecticide. Oh. Did you ever hear that? No, oh, never heard that. Pa Patty had a lot of stories. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think we heard that one in our oh, yeah. Yeah, that doing that. Well, she wouldn't. She wouldn't say that. No, she was very very proper. She like. Are you on? Am I on? <laughs> Changing the subject just quickly for, for a second. You're talking about, the, we were talking about the fairies and all. Right. All of these models you see in here, every one of them, except maybe one. You know who built them? Stringfellow. Martin Stringfellow, yep. Yeah, he was a talented boy. He, he was, and he loved the fairies. He used to talk about getting on the ferries, and he said, like on the Elisha Lee, he used to talk about there was a window there, and you could look down and see the engine running, you know? Yeah. And. Uh, and it, his brother, or no, Lindsay, I can't remember when, one of his family told me, said when, he, when they went across the bay, Martin stayed there that window the whole time. <laughs> he never got past there. He was just, you know, he was just. You, 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 do you ever remember going across a steamer or which to Elisha uh, Lee was right, a steamer? Right, right. Uh, or a ferry, and, and it'd be rough and it, it would oh, go like this. Yeah. And all you look at one end, You'd see nothing but air, yeah. and then the other side you'd see nothing but water. <laughs> yeah, and then it switch. <laughs> let me let me ask you something about. Uh, we'd like to have you comment on is the uh, Otto Lowe and Dick Dickinson. Right. What, what their story was. Uh, well, I, I told Lowe. Uh, well, first of all, Mr. Dickinson, he uh, he was a local lawyer, and he was a Republican candidate for Congress. Ooh. At one time, did you know that? Maybe? No, was this when he was in Cape Charles? When he was in Cape Charles, he ran for Congress. Okay. And being a Republican and a Republican president comes in, you get some favors. Yeah. Well, he he became uh, the lawyer for the United States against the. G Germans at Nuremberg. The Japanese, wasn't it? No. Now, no. Otto Lowe, Otto Lowe. Uh, was he was he represented the uh, the American government, the American people mm -hmm. at the J Japanese war trials? Yeah. War trials, yeah. yes. So two little small town lawyers mm -hmm. uh, represented this little town, yeah, which is kind of unique. To yeah, have, absolutely. And when I grew up, all the lawyers were up on the second floor. Of the bay. I don't remember that. And the third floor, Otto Lowe had a little photograph laboratory. Really? And he could, you'd take pictures with his camera and he'd develop them up there for you. Really? And needless to say, we took some interesting pictures. <laughs> <laughs> for another day there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, there was a, a photographer that I'd love to get hold of his collection. Tucson. No, this is before him. Uh, there's a lot of old pictures. Some, some of them, the portraits, there, there are, are pictures. He, he had a very interesting, uh, a big interest in history. When they moved 
there was a lighthouse called Cherry Stone Bar Lighthouse that was here during the Civil War. And when they relocated that thing up into Maryland after they built, um, they replaced it, but it's still out there. There's a caisson out there still today that replaced that lighthouse. Well, anyhow, when they were doing all that, he was this guy, Robert's Studio was the name of the studio, and their office was in the bank. This was like in 1920. And he took pictures of that. He also took portraits, weddings, stuff like that. And then he just disappeared. And I've never been able, I thought if you could ever get a hold of his, his collection, there'd be unbelievable stuff in there, I think, about Cape Charles, but I've never been able to find it. And I don't know when he left. It would have been before airtime, but not long before. But I'm wondering if Otto Lowe took over that office that he had because it, that's where it was in the bank. In, you know, this goes through my mind and people will tell me, maybe I'll start talking about Cape Charles and the fact that I have a love affair with Cape Charles, always have. It's the greatest place in the world as far as Amen. I'm concerned. <laughs> but they will ask me, what's so special about Cape Charles? Mm -hmm. And I, I can't tell you except it was Cape Charles. The way you grew up here. I grew up here. The life that you had growing up is my take on it. You know, you couldn't have had a better place to grow up. But you know, you know what? I, there, there are lots of little scenarios that I think about. One is that if you, if you were from Cape Charles, you were a member of a fraternity that you could be in California and say, "I'm from Cape Charles," and you could say, "Where?" <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's a, it's amazing how many people like Cape Charles. Yeah, well, of course, a lot of people travel travel through here. You know, back in the day, railroads. You, you know, this from. is this is sort of like nothing. It really is nothing because she just just before she died, she threw them all away. My sister Dorothy. Uh, did you know my sister Dorothy? No, I didn't. She was older than Barbara. Did mm -hmm. you ever know Barbara? I remember her vaguely. No. Uh, that was eight years older than me, but she worked in Daddy's store, in the restaurant part of it, mm -hmm. and uh, she used to save matchbox, matchboxes from everywhere. Uh -huh. I mean, you'd get one from California or whatever, and she had several, uh, more than several, she had maybe four, uh, uh, shoeboxes full of. Hmm. Uh, anyway, I always wondered who was in there. In fact, I wonder sometimes what general or what uh, yeah. what movie actor or whatever has passed through. Yeah. I mean, who would have ever believed that uh, that uh, Willie sad. Hop or Babe Ruth or yeah. uh, ever passed through here? Yeah. Well, they did. You you knew that, didn't you, or not? Or I, I mean, I don't. But I was thinking, did Babe Ruth ever pay? Did you ever see Babe Ruth or pass no, through? No, I never. Oh, I didn't see him pass through. That was a little ahead of my time. Did, did you ever see any base, big baseball names pass oh, through? Oh yeah, I, I. Benchy Dishroom. Benchy somehow or another didn't have a boy, and and uh, somehow or another he took me under his uh -huh. under his hat, and we used to go to ball games in Philadelphia. And uh, this particular time I'm talking about, uh, we went to see Philadelphia play the Yankees. And the pitcher for New York was a guy named Bob Porterfield. And Bob Porterfield had pitched over here. Really? Uh, the year before. And uh, anyway, he was in the seat up in front of us mm -hmm. and Benji, Benji decided he wanted to go to the races in Yonkers mm -hmm. and uh, we got on the train after the ball game and got it on there and there was and, and Benji said go talk to him he'd like to talk to him hey, that's Bob Porterfield I said no he said yes it is too well it was Bob Porterfield oh wow <laughs> So did you, get, did you get to talk with him? Or? Yeah, I did, oh. as a little boy, you know, yeah, I was yeah, 10 or 12 right, years old. Yeah. But yeah, we, but, but Charlie Mosley, Charlie mm -hmm. Mosley knew every ball player that ever came to Norfolk. Uh, I mean, I, yeah. I, 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 and he, he had the most unique car you'd ever find. He had a 12-cylinder Lincoln Zephyr. Zephyr. 
and it was blue, light baby blue. And when they had that film here called Clam Digger's Daughter, uh -huh. uh, they, Mr. Varney, who was the- Yeah, president, Pe president. Peter Varney. Yeah. Peter Varney used uh, Charlie Moses' car. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, well, the, uh, I've, there's a picture that I've seen. It's an old picture of a guy in a, uh, it was a it was a convertible, I guess. Yeah. And it's set up real high, you know, from what I remember. And it looked like it might have been uh, early on, maybe maybe in the before 1920, maybe the yeah. teens or something like that. And anyhow, he hauled. Um, he, he ran a ta he used it as a taxi. And Orton. I, who B. Uh, what was, it? what was his name? Mr. Orton? Orton? Mr. Orton. Now, now Charlie Mar Mosley married Mrs. Orton's daughter. Okay, okay. And they lived next door to the Baptist Church yeah. on Randolph. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. Only in Cape Charles would you know stuff like that. <laughs> and Johnny Goffman, didn't he live near there? He Johnny Goffman near... lived on Taswell. Okay. Uh, he lived uh, back, back and um, his sister was Miss Baker. Yeah, made candy apples. And she made candy apples. Uh, yeah. Somewhere along the line, I had said that she liked chocolate and one other brand, but she also had cherry yeah. candied apples. Yep. And we go by the we go by her house. Car caramel and mud. She had caramel. Caramel and, and chocolate. Candy. Yeah, but she she'd have a cherry apple yeah. and. Uh, but my golly, they were good. Yeah, and you get your teeth all stuck up in the, yeah. in the apple. They like, could walk there either uh, lunchtime. But I, or I used to go to Mrs. Baker's house. She had a restaurant. Did you know that? Uh-oh. Well, she lived where the Lewis boy lived that wrote that book. You know, the yes. apartments over there. Oh, yeah. She, there was a, there's a bigger building right in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. She had a restaurant right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember Cliff Lewis ran it at some point. And, and she was a good baker. Evidently, she was. But I remember going to her house mm -hmm. and getting bakery stuff for the store. Yeah. And uh, well, uh, let me tell you something. <laughs> if, 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 if they had a good to it boy, in my younger days, mm -hmm. that's what I did for Dad. He, mm -hmm. I mean, from carrying laundry to Wingsing to uh, mm -hmm. my aunt did laundry for the store. And uh, anyway, that's a, a not, you brought up another interesting point there, Wingsing. Oh my! Uh, did, what, did you got any stories about Wingsing? Or S what was his name? His name wasn't really Wingsing. N. G. Ben Young. Ben Jung. Ben Jung. Ben Jung. Yeah. Yeah. He liked women, <laughs> and he used to go to to Atlantic City every year to see the Miss America pageant. Uh -huh. he, that's the kind of woman he liked. He liked yeah. liked the real beauties, but the, yeah, yeah. she's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yes, but he uh, he he was he was a worker now. He but he 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 had a special cash register that he used. He had to. Pull certain, <laughs> certain fingers to get mm -hmm. it to open, mm -hmm. and uh, and he had an, an, an abacus, uh, yeah. uh -huh. and he taught me how to use an abacus. Really? Oh yeah, and and uh, he used to do my father's shirts, and I could see him now. He'd he'd tie them all up with with yeah. with uh, string and put a Chinese symbol on them, who they belong yeah. on to, and all that stuff. And, did you ever see inside his place? I, I remember looking through the window. I remember Connie McDisher had an advertisement. It was a really rough, it was a card he'd made up and printed on it. And he was selling flexiclog shoes. They were wooden shoes, I guess, that had a hinge in them or something, <laughs> sort of like sandals back in the day. And he had an advertisement in Wing Sing's laundry in the window along Strawberry Street for them, you know. So I don't know whether they were friends or not. He, he, you know, he was a dresser. Ben Young was. Oh, yeah. and in fact, Ben gave me, he gave me a pair of Argyle socks, which boys just couldn't afford our Argyle socks yeah. in my day. And I thought that was pretty, pretty, uh, yeah. 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 pretty special. And, and, and he and Dr. Trower and LT Nottingham and uh, whatever, they used to play cards over there at night. And uh, anyway, I, they'd call them once a 
Somebody bring some sandwiches over there. So you were witness to all this. I was this. witness to all that. All the money out on the table and everything. But he used to have string across the across the uh, ceiling, and he he had like when he would do a bunch of shirts, he'd hang them all up, and they he had and he had he. Uh, Cold heaters, you know, like mm -hmm. little yeah. small heaters, heaters. Uh, drying out the, the laundry. Did his family, his whole, did his family live in that same building up above it, or not? Not in my day. He brought his wife over here. Uh huh. Do you know where they did live? Probably behind there somewhere. Okay. <laughs> but I think his father was here, or so. Yeah. Not, uh, it's been 10 years ago now, maybe, or something like that. Ben Jones' nephew or something like that came came here. He was very interested in, in the history of the laundry here. And apparently they were they were here early on, uh, you know, in the early 1900s maybe, or maybe even before that they had a, a, a laundry business. I don't think it was always where, where you're talking about now, but, uh, you know, the, what we think of is, is where it is, but in fact, there's a picture in a yearbook somewhere of a guy named Bang, a little kid named Bang, out on the school ground, Chinese, and it's got to be some of their ancestors or relatives uh, somehow. But uh, did you ever hear of him or that Bang? B A N G, and he he was like the senior's pet, they called him, you know, or something. They had a picture of him standing out in front of the school, just a little, little kid. He couldn't have been more than five, six years old at the time, I guess. But anyhow, Ben Jung's. I don't know, nephew or something like that came here looking for information on him, you know, and we gave him whatever we had. And I st stayed in touch with him for a right good while. And in fact, he actually went back to China to see the birthplace of their grandfather, who was the one that I think established the cleaning business here in, in Cape Charles, and found him. Uh, and that's interesting, but speaking about the school, do, do you remember having a skating rink around where the <laughs> they play football now. I was wondering what it was for a long time. It was a yes, skating rink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, uh, I find it to be very interesting. But I always thought that's where Billy Sunday preached. But I know is on Randolph right now. Yeah, that post office. Yeah. Oh, I remember that very well. I used to love to go by. I, I don't know what I loved about it, but I'd ride my bicycle and go in the back in the parking lot and wheel all around the parking yeah, lot. Yeah. Well, it was also a kind of a gathering place. And now outside, they always posted who had died out on, on the telephone poles outside. And a little oh, you know one thing? Hundred. I talked about that recently. And I asked Guy Daddy, who uh -huh. has this, the, uh, yeah. I said, do you do that in, in Ancock or Explore or whatever? He said, no, only Cape Charles. <laughs> Cape Charles requires it, not requires, yeah, but it's, like it's ha habit, kind of, of, habit yeah. of sticking who died on the, on the uh, telephone poles. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of interest right now in, in the post office, so that's why I wanted to just take the opportunity to ask. Well, I do know one thing. Uh, Andy, well, Dick Dickinson, who was the lawyer, in town. His sister, uh, they were from Stanton, I think, mm -hmm. but his sister uh, was had been married and divorced, and she was working for a dentist uh -huh. in North Carolina, and uh, she, he, she sort of pushed aside his advances. She, she sort of pushed aside his advances, and she married a guy that has the hermitage mm -hmm. right outside the town on the left-hand side going out. I can't yeah. think of his name we now. We used to call it Tinkham's Farm. Um, he, he, it was Tinkham's Farm. Thomas. Thomas. Something Thomas. Oh. Yeah. Curry, Curry Tom. Curry, Thomas. Curry Thomas. It might have been that. Anyway, she, uh, she married him, and she'd been on a two week honeymoon or something and she came back and was playing golf uh, at the country club 
uh, with somebody else and they went by the post office on their way home mm-hmm. and got a package. And, and one of them wanted to open it right there. The other one said, no, let's just wait and do it, do it at home. And so they went to the hermitage and uh, the old man pulled the string and boom. Yeah, she had gotten out of the car maybe or something. She was in the car. She got burned pretty bad. Oh, did she? Okay. Yeah, now my mother heard that. Oh, really? She heard the explosion. She was, we lived on Madison Avenue, right? And she, she, uh, she was outside. It was in the early evening. I think she was taking the laundry off the, mm-hmm. off the uh, uh, line, which is another whole story. Uh, but anyway, he, uh, she lived, but the, the, he, the other guy, the husband Curry died Thomas, right yeah. away. Yeah, that was probably the first letter bomb that was ever. Yes, and anyway, Charlie Langford was a Commonwealth attorney, and uh, I, I'm trying to think of who the sheriff was, but anyway, uh, in, anyway, uh, golly, Turner. T- 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 Thomas Turner was the sheriff okay. at the time, okay. and uh, anyway, he he broke his glasses. They took him from him, and then he said he couldn't read and was getting headaches. And they gave him back to him, and he cut, broke his glasses, and and uh, cut his wrist and killed himself. Really? Yeah. Now the. Post office got involved in that because the package came by way of the post office, and that was a pretty big deal. The men came from all over. That was back in the day that a postal inspector was big deal, but mm-hmm. not not mm-hmm. today. I don't think. Yeah, I don't know. So this was all. Was this somehow related to the to the bomb thing? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to. That, that that was related to that. And I don't know if you've ever been in the post office, and I don't even know whether yeah. it's still like this or not. But around the very edge of the post office, there's a little slit between the walls and the ceiling that you could get a, on a little gun plate and walk around the edge of the post office so they could spy on you. Hmm. Well, they did that back then. Hmm. And no. The, from what I it, it's a um, it's a fallout shelter. It's still got the sign up there, you know, from back in the fifties on the side of the building. You know that symbol that they use. So you know, if it was a nuclear attack, something you could you could go there to take shelter, and it's still on a building. But I think when they built the building, also, uh, I think at the time, Cape Charles was a um, place where you registered. Boats, uh, I forget the port yes, of entry or something. Yes, port of like port of port of entry. Yeah. In fact, it, Mr. Dickinson was the head for Hancho for the port in Norfolk. Okay. At one time, at, at, at just about that time. Yeah. And, uh, but they had they built a they built a room to accommodate that in the post office upstairs. And right. Steps. Well, I've never been up there, but that's right. what they That's tell what I. Uh, Interested because I understand that they they built you know showers and uh, you know so I was wondering what the use was of the upstairs. Uh, 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 I think it's probably I'm guessing, but I think it's probably in case inspectors wanted to come and stay all day, they had a place to go to the bathroom and whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. I remember that right next door to it, there was a guy that lived there named Robbins. He was the town police at the time. Oh, Stanley Robbins? Maybe. I can't think of his first name. Yes, Judy and Mary's dad. How, what, what years are you thinking this was? I'm talking about 50. <laughs> he was a, he was a, a cop uh, somewhere in, that, in the 50s, I think, but I don't know exactly when, but Stanley Robbins. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, 49, 48. Mm-hmm. Well, it might, might have been that early. I, I, I don't he was know. tall and lanky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah. who it was. His nice son, looking man. Well, his wife Dorothy was a. She was a pretty thing too. Yeah. Uh, she was a. Um, yeah. Doing this, you talking about your mother was a 
uh, telephone operator. It's a telephone operator. Uh, I used to cut from the kindergarten through the telephone operator and go talk to the women in there. But they had one of the prettiest women that ever lived. Uh, she was a Scot. Uh, the, uh, 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 they owned the uh, Smith Speech, all that property. Oh, there. Tom Scott, or Tom, William Scott was yeah, Tom? Yeah, she was a Scott. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was her, she was his bro, his sister. Okay. I should know who that was, but I, I can't, but, but I know, I know who you're talking, we used to go to Smith Beach all the time, and what was it, Tom Smith, that owned, I guess his Tom. family probably, his property is still in Tom there. Tom Smith. In there, yeah. Uh, but he just, I don't know, maybe his, there's, there's somehow connected with the Scots, I know that, but I don't know exactly what the, what the connection is, uh, but yeah. I love it. Yeah, you, that's probably the ball, that's the ball you ran across the, for, the, for the extra might, point. Might, might be. Uh, you see your fingerprints are on there somewhere. Yeah, I, they, they do. I, I don't think it had that writing on it at the time. <laughs> do you want to talk about the photograph? Oh, yeah. The, the, what's, yeah what's the story on this? On this picture. Well, there are two. There are two different photographs, and two different occasions. And one time before this one, uh, they had a parade, which they, they. I don't think they have parades like they used to. Christmas. Did they have a Christmas? So this was the Easter. Parade. They had an Easter parade, and I played Jesus on the back, on, on a convertible. Uh, took my shirt off and all that stuff, you know. <laughs> I was like a junior in high school. And this, I think I was a, a senior in high school. That's when I played Santa Claus, handed all the candy out to the little kids. Is it because you look so much like Santa Claus? Yeah, I don't know about that now. <laughs> You're like a Santa Claus starving to death, Santa Claus. <laughs> well, you know what, now, I, the, the, of all the things that I'm telling you about, I was a good boy. I, 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 I was involved in a lot of stuff, but I was a good boy. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think you were. I, I mean, the things that you've experienced and done wouldn't have happened to some, some kid who was like breaking windows and uh, you know, acting stupid all the time there. I mean, uh, Hugh, well, there was a guy who used to work for the right, he used to work for the post office, Hugh. Hugh Roberts. Hugh Roberts. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he sort of used to talk to me in the uh, bench and mm -hmm. uh, Werner, Mr. Werner. Yeah. Oh, Paul Werner? Paul Werner. Was he I a went, mailman or something? He was a mailman, yeah. And I, I went to school with Paul, Paul and Babe, and ba Babe was the year behind me. Now, Babe was a genius. I don't remember that name. But... I, I'll tell you what, they came over here and gave IQ tests one year. Or they didn't come over, but they passed out all these things. And Babe made such a high score, they couldn't believe it. They sent people over here from Richmond to do, do his uh, IQ test all over again. And sure enough, Babe's the genius. Really? Yeah. Who was this? Babe Warner. So what, what was his... Uh... Where did he end up? He, he didn't stay in Cape Charlotte. He went, went in the printing business in Florida. In Florida? Yeah. I know a little bit about him because he's, he's distantly related to me. And he's really related to the Etsy's. Okay. Uh, uh, is he still around or he, uh, is he still alive as far as you know? Paul. If he is, he's my age. Yeah. Well, Work. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm losing them fast. <laughs> uh, that reminded me, Joyce Rudy. Did you get that information I sent you about her? You were trying to find her if she was still around. And she, she was. I was, I was her date at uh, junior senior prom, oh. and she was three or four years older than me. But she went to the same church. Uh, she was a good girl, and she had a brother named. Bobby Rudy. Don't remember him. Bobby was, I thought it was pretty special, but he drank himself to death. Oh, is that right? Um, something else flashed through my mind when we were talking about, about that. Oh, 
Tell us the time about you needed a haircut. Oh, the haircut. <laughs> trouble making the My special away. haircut. Well, I used to go to Slim Kalana, mm -hmm. and he was right right on the west side of, no, he, yeah, he, I was, he was on the east side of the theater building, okay. Radiant Theater. Yeah. And uh, I used to go in there and the men would come in, well, they were rather cruddy men anyway, but, and they'd start talking about, he had nude pictures on the wall and all that <laughs> stuff. And, and mother asked me one day, where, do you get, where are you getting your hair cut? I said, Slim Kalana. Oh, you can't go there. He's got new pictures hanging on his wall, and he, they talk dirty stuff, you know. <laughs> so uh, she said, you got to go to another place. So I said, well, I want to try Cheese Carmine. So I went down to Cheese Carmine's, sat in the red. Did y'all ever go to Cheese? First haircut, ID Carmine. Uh, they, they had chairs down on one side. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I was sitting there. He got ready to be my turn, and I got up in the chair. And I think it was cheese, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, he got feeling all over my head. He said, guys, I want you to look at this. He said, look at him. And he said, you know, he's got a head like a god. He said, a goddamn mule. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I said, I ain't going back there. <laughs> So anyway, I decided to go to Harry Rudy. I knew him anyway, because I knew Joyce. But uh, anyway, uh, anyway, I went to Harry Rudy, and there was a, I went two or three times, and there was a sign up on the wall, with, you know, haircuts, 25 cents or 15 cents or whatever it was. It said singe, a singe. I asked him what a singe was. He said, you know, we burn the edges off your hair. I said. I want a singe. <laughs> so How old were you? I was about 11, maybe 10 or 11. <laughs> he singed my hair and burned it. Burned my skin. I said, I ain't going back here either. <laughs> anyway, that's, so that's that. Yeah, the there were no other barbers. Except, except, I'll tell you what, I can't think of her name now, but she used to do books, Miss Bibbins or somebody. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she's black, and, and she, uh, when, I, when I made that speech over at the, the schoolhouse that time about Clem Digger's daughter, mm -hmm. uh, she let me know that there was one other barber that I could have gotten my hair done. It was Johnny Sample. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember, do you remember Paul Bibbins? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's in that family. That's his yeah. wife. Yeah, well, Frances Latimer. Frances Latimer, yeah. Talking about. She's a, a historian. She's just passed away. In right. Fact, she, she's the one that published Jim Lewis's book, Cape Charles, A Railroad Time. And uh, uh, so and I, I got to know her fairly well. She, I, I really enjoyed visits with yeah, her. She was a smart woman. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, her father, I can remember when we were kids, Paul Bibbins, would come through time, and I had, he had either a cart or I think he had a pickup truck. And he sold a lot of beans. He, he had a little farming patch, I guess, where they lived up near, near Simpkin Sidings or some, somewhere up that way, yeah. yeah. And I can remember they were the best butter beans I've ever, they still, I've never had any, any better than that, but mom would buy them from him and, uh, and he sold other stuff too. Well, I'll tell you what's expensive. Well, everything's expensive anymore. Yeah. But that little guy on, in, as you go into Machapungo, on the right-hand side. Oh, oh yeah. Is, he, uh, <laughs> yeah. Best strawberries. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've got cantaloupes there too. And if you ever want to make strawberry preserves, they, they'll they'll do it for you. Oh, was that right? Oh man, they're good strawberries. Yeah, no, I My don't. wife can tell you that. <laughs> anyway, uh, talking about you. <laughs> yeah. I you know one thing. There's there's so many stories, and so little time. Well, I could like, talk. I could talk for a year. Yeah. Really. In fact, I do. I talk all year. <laughs> well, you know what? What I wish I would do is every now and then a, a thought will pop into my head about something, and I wonder what happened to this person, or whatever. And dummy me, I, what I should do is sit down right there and make myself a note. Ask Lloyd Kellum, does he know? Blah 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 blah. 
because uh, you're the go-to person for well, I, I am now, but <laughs> maybe because I'm I'm the last one standing. <laughs> but did, no. did you know um, or remember John Van Ness Moore, J. V. Moore? He was in the early real estate and had that the big house on Bay Avenue. Um, I don't know him. He was, I think, yeah, he, there, there's one picture of him I've seen and it, when a bunch of Cape Charles uh, dignitaries went to Philadelphia, they launched a tug named the Cape Charles and he was one of them in that picture. You know, this may run this thing, and I don't want to, but I'll tell you, it's an interesting situation out of this little town. And that is that uh, Carlisle Nottingham was mm -hmm. the, you know him, he's, he's the, was the postmaster of, Somewhere in Eastfield, match up on one of them. But anyway, about the story of him le leaving his ring. Uh, the, the Germans were coming back mm -hmm. to take his prison camp, and he escaped. And, and he escaped so fast, he left his ring in his pants. Yep. Yep. And lo and behold, 50 years later or 40 years later, he was going with Elizabeth Ballard. Who, who was one of the Ballards. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, anyway, some kid found that ring and was smart enough to write Cape Charles and get his name and address. And the Air Force flew him over here because he had escaped and whatever. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and anyway, he had parachuted in, in Germany some kind of way and landed on a church. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And I think he died, I mean, injured his leg. Injured his leg. But anyway, that's that's one story. But the Air Force saw him. He made several speeches all over this, you know, finding his leg and finding who he was and all that. And anyway, I was telling my cousin, who was a Bennett, Mm -hmm. One of the four boys that my father had raised, uh, I was, Pete Bennett was the postmaster for Newport News. And, and uh, I was telling him this story about Carlisle. Now Carlisle was from Cape Charles mm -hmm. on the beach. Mm -hmm. His father was a doctor. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, what do you call him? He, he, I can't tell you anything you don't know. See, and that's about the truth. Yeah, he was Pardon? the... C.L. Nottingham. C.L. Nottingham. He, yeah, he was also the type, what do they call him, the person that, you know, when somebody's killed or something, they do it. He was coroner. the coroner. I think he was the uh, a coroner. Right. His, the Colonel's father was. Uh, he had a pretty home. He had two columns on it mm -hmm. where he lived. But anyway, uh, I was telling him about this, and his wife was with him, and she said, tell him, tell him, tell him about you. And I said, what did you do? He said, oh, no, I didn't do anything. He said, uh, he said, I was stationed in New Mexico or somewhere and I was getting ready to go overseas and said, I, I had one more night out of the town and we were gonna go to California and I didn't have any money. <clears throat> so he said, I, I, the only thing I had was a watch. And so he said, I, I pawned my watch and uh, or tried my watch and sold it or whatever it was. And he said, so I have, have seen it. But he said, you know what? He said, I had a guy that came in from wherever it was in California, came in the post office and I was telling him that I had been in that time. He said, and he told him about his watch. And he said, the guy said, oh, that's sad or something or other. And he went home, came back, and he, the next day he came back, he had his watch. He had turned in his watch to him, and uh, he had his name in the back of it. But I find in a small town like Cape Charles. Yeah, now this was, this was Carlisle you're talking about? No, this is my cousin. Oh, your cousin? His okay. name, his, they called him Pete, but his name was really Ralph, but they called him oh, Pete. Oh, okay, wow. So did he give it, he gave him back the watch or? He gave him back the watch. Is that still in the family somewhere, you know? Yeah. Or? I don't know where it is now, but, yeah. but he had four brothers. Three, he had three brothers, four boys, all of them, all of them joined the military. 
and my other aunt, all of them joined the military. Everybody in my family were in the military except my father. And he got deferred automatically because he ran a business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, sort of strange. Was it Elton Bennett? Is that the ones you're talking about? Elton Bennett was one of those boys. Yeah. Is he so alive? He died. He did it, yeah. He was but I got to spend some time with him before he died. Yeah, he was an interesting, interesting guy. <laughs> Getting back to uh, the story about the high school ring, the Air Force made a, if you can find it, you can probably find it on YouTube, about that. He, he, ta he tells that story. That, that you're talking about. I've got, I think I've got a copy of the video home or something, but I went down, he presented that, I think it was a Lions Club meeting or something they had down at the America House. This has been 15 years ago, probably. Hey, 